What's up, JD6 Oak 5 in the house? Hey, Madison. How are you? I'm good. I'm a little bit voiceless, but I'm good. How are you? Well, I've got my voice. I can imagine you uh, would have lost yours over the past several days. Yeah, we had a hoot and a holler and a holler and a hoot. There was the, there may have been a shot ski involved. Have you ever oh, done a goodness. shot ski? Oh, yeah. Yes. You've done some shot skis in your day? Yeah. I would, um, I would love nothing more than to do one in Frisco, Texas, though. Oh, yeah. That's a good, that's like top tier shot ski. Um, the lady who, like right when I got to tailgate, shortly after, I think it was Chad Myros who was like, oh, this lady has shots, like go do one. I was like, okay. So I walk over to this like woman that I don't know. And I was like, I heard you had shots. And she's like, oh yeah, we have a shot ski. And so did the shots. I told him I'd never done one before. Didn't. And then at the end, um, one of the girls was like, that was pretty good. And I was like, I watch Bravo. Like I've seen Andy Cohen do a shot ski. I know what's <laughs> happening here, but it was like a root beer shot. And of course I had no idea what was in it. And then later someone goes, oh yeah, there was Everclear in that. And I was like, good night. I didn't though, be probably because I only had like three and a half beers and that at tailgate. So I was like pretty, I was feeling it at the start of the game, but I was talking to my advisor today and she was like, did you hallucinate? And I was like, actually, no, I did not. <laughs> My team did win the championship. I know that. I know that. <laughs> I was I was there for that. <laughs> <laughs> Looked like yeah, great no, weather it was, too. It was good. Yeah. Um Friday night at the the bar that's kind of dubbed themselves the Jackrabbit Bar is outside. Um, or has an outside area. It's like an indoor outdoor thing. Um, it was a little bit chilly. I was not, I mean, I knew it what obviously wasn't gonna be 70 because it is January. Mary, but um I was not prepared for like the 45 and the wind it was the wind that gets you <laughs> but for game day it was it was pretty good can't complain about that so awesome it looked fun on TV yeah it was great lost luggage aside everything <laughs> is fine <laughs> you can't you have it has to be uh it can't be perfectly smooth no of course not well you know the listeners viewers don't know um, but you know, I'm sure my husband's going to torment me when he hears that I'm telling everybody this, um, on Thursday night, you texted me and said, Hey, I can't do the pod tonight. And I was like, okay, I was on the interstate. It's like no big deal. Like 45 minutes later, we stop at a truck stop to get some taco Johns and some gas. This is the only taco Johns in Ohio. So this is the truck stop that we stop at whenever we're traveling. It's like our thing. And I'm like ready to go inside and Joe is not coming with me. And he's like, oh, I have to get my wallet. But it's taking him an astronomical amount of time to look for his wallet. We determined that the wallet was not in the car. We determined that the wallet was on the counter in the apartment in Akron, Ohio, an hour away. After we'd already, we traveled an hour at this point. So we went back <laughs> two hours down, found the wallet which I mean, obviously it had his ID and like, he, you need that to fly. Had we been driving, I would have just been like, well, I guess you're not drinking this weekend. And we would have just kept going, but the plane needed it. So that was the start. And then Friday through Monday morning, everything's smooth. We land in Cincinnati and I find out that my luggage is in Ohio because it did not make it onto the second plane. But we made it home. Everything's good. We're great. And we get to do a podcast tonight. So we talk about uh different kind of teamwork from a shot ski basketball. I'm not sure how a shot ski plays into this. It's teamwork. You got to have teamwork. Okay. That's fair. That's valid. Um, lots of teams have some really good teamwork and we are going to get into that. We're heading into the second week of summit league play. Um, this is our second show of the season. So we're going to talk big sky summit challenge. We're also going to talk about just kind of what's going on around the league. Um, most teams have two games in. I think there's only a couple teams that only have one game in at this point. And then we're also later going to talk to North Dakota State head coach Dory Collins. So you'll want to stick around for that and make sure that you don't miss that. We are, however, not going to talk for an hour tonight because I would love to play in a Rocket League tournament at 10 p.m. Eastern time. So let's see if we can. I would get love this to go to bed early after snow blowing numerous times over the. Yeah, past how how much snow did you end up getting? 
Uh, so I live extreme southwest side of Sioux Falls, and in our yard, I measured just shy of a foot. So wow, I think we got another inch today. It was really pretty snow today. The movie type of snow, the stuff we should have yeah. had for Christmas when the, it was like, forty degrees yeah. out. Of, yeah, the kind of stuff that makes me a little bit homesick. There are a lot of reasons I don't miss South Dakota, but when I see all the snow, I'm like, I don't have that to talk about with everyone. Like everyone coming on from Frisco was like, how far are you going today? How far are you going today? I heard we got eight inches. I heard we got 10. And I'm like, we have none. And I kind of missed that a little bit. Yeah, there was no wind with it, but that'll change. I heard uh, very windy and very cold. January cold. The cold, God, this is such a South Dakota thing to say, but the cold that's like, why do we continue? Why do we stay here? Why do we still live here? Why do we still yeah. Live here? Yeah. Yeah. It has not been that cold in Ohio. And it's so funny because when I moved here, granted, I did move from South Carolina, but I would tell people like, oh, I only lived in South Carolina for two years. I'm from South Dakota originally. And then they'd be like, okay. And two minutes later, they'd be like, you're not ready for the cold here. And I'm like, did you miss the part about me being from South Dakota? <laughs> but yeah, it doesn't get that cold here. No. Um, okay. Summit League, Big Sky Summit Challenge, Dory Collins. Let's do this. Where things sit in the league right now. ORU and St. Thomas are at 2-0 at the top of the league. ORU picked up a 15-point win over Kansas City. I believe they also beat Denver quite mm -hmm. convincingly. I was a little bit disappointed in what I saw from Denver. I think that's just because I always expect a lot out of them. Um, they are fairly young, though. I feel like they've been impacted by the portal and graduation a little bit over the past couple of years. So we'll see um, what they can put together. And then St. Thomas beat UND very handily. Um, was that the game they scored like 32 points in the first quarter? Yeah, 32, Last 25 in the second. They had a 22-point lead at half, it looks like. Yeah, yeah. Well, okay, so here's the crazy part. I want to say they let him back in because I don't think that UND had a chance to win that game really after the first quarter and certainly not after the first half. However, it felt like UST St. Thomas started really hot and then just, like, didn't – they kept it up but not, like, to the caliber they were playing in the first quarter. Granted, mm -hmm. if, if you had four 32-point quarters, like, that would be absolute madness and chaotic. But I felt like – I don't want to say let them back in, but, like, if, for lack of a better phrase – I felt like they kind of took their foot off the gas a little bit, and I kind of wish that they hadn't done that. But regardless, they then went on and played Kansas City. That was a tight game for most of it, but they pulled away late. So the final score does not necessarily reflect um, what happened there. But anything no, from those – go ahead. Sorry. sorry, I was just looking uh, before we hopped on to it. You know, St. Thomas has this squad that's built that, uh, you know, you this is – and Coach Sin would – I'm sure is extremely happy with the way her team has played the first two games, but they're beating teams that um, they should beat, right? Like if you want to be a contender in the summit league, you can't lose these games to teams that might be in a little bit of a rebuild mode, right? Like it's quote unquote, not their season kind of a thing. Um, that being said, UND, you're right. I mean, we talked about it last time too, just a little surprising, Um but just looking at the stat line, you know, Casey, um, who was my preseason pick for player of the year, and she absolutely could still win it, and we're only two games in. But, you know, I look at the game against St. Thomas. She took 25 shots, which is, uh, you know, 11 to 25, finished with 32 points, five rebounds. Um, but the next closest was um, Hurst, who took 10. And then after that, it was um, – Jayla Owen off the bench with six shots. So it was quite a discrepancy there in that game as far as shots. But shoot or shoot, um, Casey's a hell of a ball player. Um, but just a little bit more balance, it looks like, with North Dakota. I'm trying to pull up the other game UND played. Uh, did you say that was against Kansas? No, that was against SDSU. Okay. SDSU, yeah. Yeah. Um, Yeah, and in that game too, uh, Casey, 22 shots. Um, the next closest was, is it Samaya? Is that how you pronounce it? Samaya Hopkins, yeah. Samaya, okay, eight shots. 
um, Casey had 17 and then um, Kira Pemberton had eight. So I, I haven't dug too deep into literally any team's stat line of every game this season, but that just looks a little, um, I'd be curious, Madison, to see the assists too. Um, yeah. Um, you know, it does. See, they had five, they had five assists on 20 made field goals against SDSU. UND only had five assists. Mm -hmm. Which goes back to what Mallory said in the post game after Mayville State. Mm -hmm. And I was going to say, like, we're going to get to the Big Sky Summit Challenge, so I don't want to, like, say too much about it because we are going to talk about UND um, and their win over Idaho State, but it mm -hmm. gets better. Like, the balance that they're looking for that you're bringing up showed up in that game. I'm going to need to see it show up a few more times before I, like, yep. you know, put money on that, but um, but it does start to get better. One thing I'll say about St. Thomas, and this could be, you know, just me being high on them since I talked to Rusin last week, um, and also, like, who doesn't want to cheer for the underdog, especially like that? Them coming into the Summit League tournament last season, winning a game, um, putting up a fight. I think that St. Thomas is playing with the balance mm -hmm. that, like, SDSU has. Not this, it's not the same because it's not, um, you know, the same group of girls that have been together. AJ's really good at keeping girls around, training them, prepping them, getting them minutes. Um, like, wasn't it, I think it was last year or the year before, none of AJ's girls were in, like, the top 25 for minutes played because they were that balanced. St. Thomas yeah. is not necessarily on that level, but the way that they're sharing the ball and the way that they're moving the ball, if it's not Amber Scalia, it's Joe Langman down low, like, they're getting open shots anywhere they can. They have more than one shooter on the floor. And it's, I think that is a disadvantage for teams like North Dakota where you do have the star in Casey Barovich because they're going to be able to shut her down. And if you can't find, you know, other shooters or other open shots, you're obviously not going to be successful. So I think that's going to play to St. Thomas's favor. How many uh, players is SDSU rotating through right now? Eight, seven? Honestly, I can't seven tell you. I can't, remember, I can't remember how many are on the roster. They have uh, two players. And I only have this on the Summit League site for Summit League games. So two of them so far, but they have two of the top 25 in minutes. That's it. Okay. Madison. Yeah. Well, both Madisons. Maddie Mathowitz and Maddie Blastuin. Blastuin, yeah. Yeah. Um. Okay. So speaking of SDSU, that's where we're going next because tied it tied for, I guess it would be third at 1-0, and the only two teams who have played one game are in the league are South Dakota State and North Dakota State. We can start with um, SDSU. They beat North Dakota. There's not really a surprise there um, for me. We can talk, I guess, more about them in the Big Sky Summit Challenge because that's where the stats that I've pulled are. But any thoughts mm -hmm. about SDSU from you at this point? No, you know, I mean, when we do this, um, I think it's important that any – predictions and comments I make about teams uh, remain honest. And at the time, like the last episode we did, how I said uh, USD was head and shoulders above. And at the time I thought that was true. Now I, I think that um, I still think that USD overall talent wise is one of the top teams along with Oral Roberts and SDSU. But I think like this head and shoulders thing doesn't necessarily exist anymore, um, especially with some of the inconsistencies we've seen with USD on the defensive end. Um, but SDSU is such a, it's just, and it's a kudos to the student athletes and, and coach Johnston too, um, extremely disciplined, extremely, or take care of the ball. Um, their, their efficiency on offense is a testament, not only this year, but what we've seen anyways, but uh, years past. So a lot of consistencies with this squad, um, that I, that I've, I've seen, um, the UND game, I guess, doesn't necessarily surprise me, uh, defensively, they shut down pretty much everyone. I mean, even holding Casey to 17 points on 22 shots is quite impressive. So yeah. good, good start. Um, yeah, I didn't check too much into the big sky, but I know that, um, uh, is it Paige? 
Yeah. Had a career off. night. Yeah. yeah. I mean, my goodness. We're gonna get there. I don't care what level of ball you're at. That's that's incredible. Bonkers. Yeah. Um, North Dakota State's one Summit League win comes over USD. I believe that was the first day of Summit League play for both teams. USD did not look super hot. I think they, um, in the post game, was it Grace Larkins who basically said, listen, that was not us. You know, we're going to write it off. We're going to come back better tomorrow. She was pretty firm about that. Um, yeah. So I'm not willing to accept that as, you know, USD having an off year or whatever. I don't, I'm not really looking at that game. I think it was good for NDSU's morale, if anything, um, even though they went out to Montana state and did not play super well. And you'll hear that in the interview with Jory Collins later, I guess I didn't know one thing that came out of that interview. I brought that game up just briefly um, because they only scored, they scored 42 points in the paint against USD and they only scored 18 points in the paint against Montana state. And I was like, obviously, that is not conducive to you maintaining a high octane offense. So I was like, how do you keep that up? And he's like, well, one thing about Montana State, he's like, we're kind of writing that off because we literally flew out there the day of the game. They did not get there the night before. They didn't have their normal walkthrough, their routine. They got the the day of the game. Um, And I was like, I didn't know that, you know. And he said it was pretty evident right away that they weren't, like, doing what they needed to do or even moving the way they needed to move. So. I'm willing to write, I guess, the NDSU beating USD, write that off for USD, and also write the Montana State game off for NDSU. I think both of those teams are better than what they've shown us um, for the most part, but only time yeah. will tell. And I remember watching the the game too, and NDSU was just better. Just one of those games that they were they they were the better team that day. And I, yeah, Grace is right that the USD's can play much better than what they did. And it just stinks. Cause that was a home game, um, you know, over winter break, um, you and or excuse me, Jesus, uh, NDSU shot the lights out that game. Um, heaven Hamling, welcome back. Good to see her putting up <laughs> great stats again. Um, yeah, it was just, they, they were the better team. Yeah. 100%. Um, the next tie that we have at one and one is USD DU. We've talked a little bit about USD. They did get an overtime win over Omaha. Um, I'm really frustrated with people that are writing off Omaha right now. I know that they didn't play super well in the Big Sky Summit Challenge. They, one of those games they kind of had a chance in and they kind of let it go at the end. Um, and I know they lost to DU like by more than they should have. I get that. The way they challenge USD, a team that scores like USD, a team that has Grace freaking Larkins on it, like the way that they challenged them and took them um, to overtime, I don't think that that's a team that you can necessarily write off. And I think that we see this every year in the Summit League. It's the same thing I said about Kansas City last year. I told everyone, I was like, wait till the Summit League tournament. Kansas City's going to blow your freaking mind. And everyone's like, no, they're not good. They have no talent, this and that. And I was like, okay. I think that's Omaha. Omaha's found a way to get into the Summit League Championship. How many of the last four or five years? Three times in the last five years or so. Um, I just don't. I'm not willing to write them off yet. But no, they had a great game, a great fourth quarter um, defensively. Um, holding, they held USD to only 11 shots. Only USD only made three shots in the fourth quarter. Um, one of six from three point land. So yeah, not great shooting, but good defense from Omaha to force it. And they, uh, you know, OT, they only scored five points in the extra time, but, um, and you know, as an SDSU fan, Omaha is a tough place to get a W to begin with. Um, it really is. I don't know what it is, but I heard, what, what was it a few years ago when we first started, they were saying it was, it's got something People to do with so cold. damn cold in there. Cause the ice. Yeah. I don't know. I think it's just, I think that Baxter is one of those places that when you're not playing hockey, it's bigger than the sport you're playing inside of it. You know, like playing in the maybe center, like playing volleyball in the maybe center. You're so far away from like what's happening. And I think it's a little closer in Baxter, but it's still like kind of far. So I, and I'm not saying that has anything to do with it. I just think that Baxter is one of the gyms that is different from the majority of the gyms in the summit league 
Yep. You know, I like agree. imagine, and, and if you're SDSU, um, also the Sanford Coyote Sports Center, like the student section's close, it's close, but like at SDSU, they're like on top of you. And yeah. at Baxter, they're like so far. So I wonder if going from like switching environments like that has anything to do with it, but maybe it's just the curse of Omaha. I don't know what it is, um, but it is a tough place to play and a, a yeah. tough place to win for sure. Um, I don't have a lot to say about Denver. I want to mention them because I feel like they deserve to be mentioned. I am going to talk about them when we get to the Big Sky Summit Challenge, but as far as the Summit League play, I don't have a ton of notes. Um, at the bottom, Kansas City, North Dakota, and Omaha. So to kind of continue what we were saying, I've seen good things from all of these teams. And when we get to to the Big Sky Summit Challenge, there's a lot of good to talk about with Kansas City as well. Um, so just I think in the Summit League, these three have been a little bit, a little bit unlucky, a little bit less put together than they should be. Um, I, it's only yeah, and it's I think it's pretty these top five. And then I don't want to say bottom four. So you got this, the current standings that we just went to the top five and then these bottom four teams, it doesn't mean like they're bottom feeders of the league. Like to me, these are team, those are the four teams that the most right now are trying to figure themselves out. Um, I'm not worried. Like you said, I'm not worried about any one of like North Dakota, Kansas city, uh, Denver and Omaha. I'm not worried about them. They'll find their rhythm. Um, and if anything, what the Summit League tournament has proven, um, despite if you're a, a SDS, you're a USD fan, is there is a home court, but these teams advantage a little bit, but these teams aren't afraid of it. Yeah. Like, they come out and compete. So whether you're going to be the eight seed or the nine seed or the seven seed, like it's still going to be a team that you can't sleepwalk through. Yeah, a hundred percent. We're totally not going to finish by ten. My husband told me that too, and I was like, "No, we can do it." We oh, can. we can do it. I know. We can do it. No. Um. Okay. So, like, one thing I do want to say, and I don't know. This is just me, like, shooting the breeze. I wonder how much the travel impacts Denver, because it's like people have have asked me in the past. I don't know why. I don't know why they think my opinion's valuable, but people have asked me in the past, like do you see Denver leaving, particularly after Western Illinois left? I really don't. I The only reason I could, I guess, is because they have, I don't want to say a lot of sports because I don't know how many, but like they have hockey, which we don't have, but you can also say that for UND and Omaha. So I don't see that, you know, being an issue. Um, they have gymnastics and they don't really have, there's no one kind of in our area of the Midwest that like they would travel to. I think they're in the big 12 for um, gymnastics, but there's no one like at our, at the mid-major level really in our area. Um, they have lacrosse. I can't remember what else they have. They have a lot of Olympic sports mm -hmm. and like the summit league doesn't outside of like swim and dive track cross country, baseball, softball, which Denver also doesn't have softball, um, which is wild to me, but Especially being I, don't, I wonder I wonder, like, I personally think they're not going to leave because I I don't know where they would go. There's nowhere for them to go. Yeah, I don't know any other conference that would be of equal or lesser value than the Summit League. I think um, BYU leaving the West Coast Conference, like, I, leaves an opening, but I don't really think the WCC is looking for Denver. But that would um, still be just as much travel, though. Just as much. Yeah. It's just as much. You're still crossing a time zone. Now you have to cross the mountains. Like, I assume Denver flies everywhere anyway, because I can't imagine them. Like, it's even to fly to, I don't know what the quickest flight would be in the Summit League. Um, Probably yeah. Sioux Falls. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. Is Omaha. It? Omaha, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just wonder a little bit how much like the travel impacts them. Also, they're on a different schedule. They have um, a quarter system or a trimester system, one of the two. But I remember like when, when our teams were kind of starting to play, I texted Dosha and I was like, well, you guys haven't played in 10 days. She was like, yeah, because we had finals. It was like in mid-November. 
um, because they're on a different academic schedule than everybody else. I wonder if they have trimesters then. I think, I think, yeah, she told me it was a quarter system, but I, I also wondered quarter. if it was trimester. Um, but yeah, it's just wild. So I don't know. That's something to like, think about, I guess, if you want to, if you're a conspiracy theorist, do you think Denver will leave the summit? People also talk about St. Thomas. Apparently they're gunning for the big East. We'll see. I don't know. Both that. their squads have come out firing though the last couple of years. Who knows? Haven't they? They they're talk, they're they're walking the walk after their fans talk the talk. Yeah. I think that the St. Thomas women, by the way, listener, if you have not watched our interview with Ruth Sin, it didn't come out in an episode, it came out by itself um last Friday morning. Go to our YouTube page, watch that. She's incredible. She can now name all of Santa's reindeer. If you were uh, wondering about that. Um, But yeah, I just, I think that the St. Thomas women are going to give a lot of people a run for their money this year. And I'm excited to see that. Okay. Let's talk big sky summit. Um, By the way, if you notice, Jordan, can you see the episode title of in the left-hand corner? Yeah. Yeah. I thought the that big was pretty sky is falling. I love it. Yeah. So, um, big sky summit challenge. If you remember, the deal was a point and a half for road wins, a point for help wins. After that, after all the games, we were tied at 21 and a half for both leagues. So then they went to point differential, points scored. The summit won by 20 ish points, 20 something points, um, which means we don't get an arm wrestle. The Big Sky has laid claim to winning the arm wrestle, the non-existent arm wrestle. I want an arm wrestle. I think we should push, like, have some so- sort of social media campaign to get an arm wrestle arm wrestle between Josh Fenton and the Big Sky Commish, because I want to see it. I want to see him shoot a, a, like, one of those competitions where one's on – each end and it's the first to hit a layup a free throw and a three-pointer a three-pointer yeah i want to see that too but i don't what if they're not good at basketball well we saw josh's um free throw fiasco i think josh i think the commish could make a full court putt Based on those videos. He, he might he might be able to. He might be able to. Um, I saw his when they did the free throw challenge, like the office, the door shooting. Mm-hmm. Um, I commented on that because Mindy K was his rebounder. And I just love Mindy K. She's the best. I commented on that, I think, from the podcast account. And I said the real question is how is Mindy K doing, like recovering after being the rebounder? And Ryan Powell replied and said the rumor is that she broke her SUU jersey out of the frame on her office wall and went down to the rack looking for a pickup game. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I heard and that the Pentagon went- has a noon ball, so maybe she went down there. Maybe she went down there, and she said it's funny because it's true. Oh, my goodness. It absolutely <laughs> cracked me up. The Summer League office Twitter game is on fire. I'm not going to lie. Um. Cool. Okay, so Big Sky Summit Challenge, we're not going to get an arm wrestle. The Summit League did win based on point differentials. Let's talk about games. South Dakota mm-hmm. State had a double overtime win over Northern Arizona. Um, I was going to say on the women's side, obviously. We talk about women's ball here. Come on. Um, double overtime win over NAU. Paige Meyer, as Jordan mentioned, had a career night with 37 points. Brooklyn Meyer had 22 points and 11 rebounds. What I want to talk about, my player of the game, is Mesa Biome. Mesa Bayam had five blocks. That's, I think, a lot for one game. Three of those came in one overtime. I can't remember if it was the first overtime or the second overtime. I want to say it was the second. Holy smokes. Three of them. Regardless, I mean, it was three in a row. It was like two consecutive and then like a play and then another block. Um, The way that Mesa Bayam played, especially in overtime, was 150% the difference maker for SDSU. And that's not to take anything away from Paige or Brooklyn, but they can score all those points. And if there's no defense, it doesn't matter. But wouldn't you say though, Madison, with like the way that SDSU is constructed this year is you're going to expect um, two or three of those players to put up those points. Everyone else has to contribute. So if it's going to be a low scoring game and the Meyer, the Myers are 
and maybe Tori and, and the other and the other Maddie, like out of those, those are gonna be your scores, right? But if it's if they're struggling for SDSU to win, then they get they're gonna need that from the bench. Their defensive yeah, stuff, I, they're gonna they're gonna need that's the exactly assist. what I'm saying. Without yeah. the way that Mesa played in that overtime, that game does not go in our favor. Um so for me, I was really impressed. With Mesa Byam, I think she's come a long way. I wish that she'd gotten more time last year. I wish that she'd gotten more time the year before. Um, but I think that she is seems to be embracing her role and doing a damn good job of it. So that was, um, for me, the player in that game. I don't know if you got to see any of that game or have any other thoughts. but No, I just – I saw the, the stat line that night, and I just thoroughly impressed um, – with SDSU or Roberts that night. Um, and like you mentioned earlier, UND picking up a good win against Idaho state who, I mean, we, we can talk smack about the big sky, right? I didn't think it was, is that good of a team? Um, but picking up a win and I believe that one yeah. was on the road. Let me double check. Well, it yeah. was and for UND. Uh, that was a 78 to 72 win. Yep. UND needed that so badly so badly um and it wasn't and here's necessarily the super pretty, sorry sorry to interrupt madison here's, but here's yeah. the balance no, here's they the, had here's the balance. 18 16 13 12 13 mm -hmm. uh, miranda vanderwall with 18 casey 16 uh samaya 13 nakia Kiera. 12 and then kiera with 13 off the bench i mean there you go that's und with that balance yeah there. Kara Pemberton has been getting some really good minutes lately. I think that if she keeps it up, I think that, that might be kind of the missing piece for them a little bit. Um, we got to see UND settle down and kind of really settle in for the first time this season. They didn't look out of whack or out of sorts. They looked like they knew what was happening and were communicating well. Um, and it was fun to watch. I was happy to see them win. 16 assists. On 23 field goals. There you go. Bingo. Night and day difference from, you know, the last week and a half, those two summit, one or two summit league games before the big sky. So yeah, kudos fighting Hawks. Um, I don't know when I am talking to Mallory, but write that down because I want to bring that up when I talk to her. I'll have to check in my notes later. I went through um, this season and I put like in the notes app on my laptop or my phone, I went through and looked at the schedule on when teams are home and said like, okay, I'm going to talk to this coach then, this coach then, like without sending the emails, but just so that I have it because mm -hmm. I don't want to catch someone when they have a road game because my schedule is so intense. I'm taking four classes this semester and Wednesday is my free day. So I have an hour in the morning on Tuesdays and an hour at night on Tuesdays where I can do interviews. Otherwise, it has to be on Wednesday. So I was like trying to make sure if if coaches are home that week, they're much more likely to be like, yeah, because otherwise Wednesday is a travel day. Mm -hmm. um, so I want to bring that up when I talk to Mallory. Um, Okay, we talked to UND. Let's go back up to DU. DU had two really close losses. I want to say 61-60 or 61-59, and then a 59-56 uh, to Northern Colorado. The first one was to Idaho, sorry. The second one was Northern Colorado. Mm -hmm. Both of those games, they really battled. Um, Idaho got a little more out of hand quicker. Northern Colorado went absolutely down to the wire. I like what I'm seeing from JoJo Jones and Emma Smith. Those are the two kind of the leaders on the team. Emma Smith came in at the freshman as a freshman last year. Um, I believe Dosha said she was a late sign too or a late ad um and she's been just a leader but they just couldn't really put it all together i do think they have some good opportunities in front of them they start with sdsu and ndsu this week so maybe not necessarily wins there um but after that they do get north dakota so i think that will be a good shot for them to um does denver have similar. both of those state games at home or do they have is that a thursday saturday on the road great question I would love to tell you. <laughs> um, don't catch me unprepared. They um, are on the road. So they don't play tomorrow. They are on the road Saturday at SDSU, and then they're home next Thursday against NDSU. Oh, okay. 
I think having NDSU at home is an advantage. I will say that. Well, NDSU knows how to kick people's tail on the on the road, so that's for sure. They do. They know how to kick tail in general. Um, <laughs> that's okay. Everyone in this league knows how to kick tail. Like I, when I hear people say like, "Oh, the league is down this year," it really pissed me off last year. But I think it pissed me off even more this year. At least at this point, when people get a people, week or two, people that said that last team. year, I laughed. That was funny. They didn't watch any basketball. They didn't watch like, anything watching? other than like there were some in the Sioux Falls media that they clearly only pay attention to two schools, and it's like, no, it's not the case. The league is not down. Like you had, I don't know, the first time in a while you had easily three or four student athletes that very easily could have won player of the year. Yeah. Like it was, yeah. and it was all different team. Like it was not down by any means. Yeah, I agree. I think that I don't know who my way to early player of the year is right now. I think at the beginning of the season, I mean, preseason, definitely Casey Barovich because she's been so close and it, sh it, sh it should be her. That's that the way the season has started. I'm like, mm, I don't know, but I don't really know who, who it would be for, for me. It's grace right now. Yeah. It, it's grace. Um, I mean, if you want to be stat wise, Casey's still up there. I'd put Paige up there. Um, I think I don't have that. I can pull up the individual stats, I guess, but those would be my, three right Front now runner. yeah yeah um do you want to have a little chat about kansas city yes kansas city for those Ooh. of you who don't know or don't remember kansas city has 11 new players they have three returners from last year jocelyn yule to my Ugas, and zaire harrell that's it um everybody else is fresh and everybody else is good. Um, and they're good as well. They're like they picked they up two and a half good. points in this thing. They they're did. Carrying... They picked up two and a half points in the Big Sky Summit Challenge. <laughs> um, they played really balanced last week, kind of the balance that we see out of SDSU that we're starting to see out of St. Thomas. Kansas City has a good chunk of that as well. Against Portland, Portland State, their point totals were 11, 10, 9, 8, 8, 8. And then I think a seven and a couple fives. That is balanced basketball they really share the ball i love teams that share the ball i love watching teams with good ball movement and that's why i was so impressed with st thomas on opening day at their first game because the way they're moving the ball was insane um kansas city's really good at that and i think that that's what it takes to succeed in the summit league at least at this point this year so i'm really excited to see if kansas city can break out um this season and see what they can do Excellent breakdown. I, yeah, Kansas City's one that um, I, I saw the um, stat line in the box on Saturday against uh, Weber State. And I, th I thought that was an excellent road. I mean, you got to go out to Utah on a Saturday. What's in Utah? Exactly. Not enough alcohol. <laughs> Oops, that was mean of me. I apologize. Um, yeah, mean is relative. <laughs> subjective. <laughs> um, let's talk briefly about ORU before we get into our predictions. Talia Jones and Ruthie Udomo are the names. They will be the names. They will continue to be the names. We add mm -hmm. Hannah Cooper in there. Those are the three that are going to carry ORU. I think ORU is really good at having some kind of defensive players that fly under the radar. Um, so it's not to say that it's all on those three, but um, I think that ORU is going to be in a good spot this season. I also think that about a lot of teams. I think that ORU is going to win some close games and lose some close games, kind of like they did. Um, do you think? Year. Do you think ORU is going to be one of those ones that might not have the like a top three MVP? player or maybe only only have one on all summit first team but like they share they're so like ultra balanced that no one particularly stands out they've just got exactly. five or six gals that 
you don't know who's going to show like they're all going to show up on different nights and the rest are going to carry their weight too. Um, or are there a couple right on the roster now, that really stick out to you? Right now, I think it should be two. I think they'll get. But see, here's the thing. Hannah Cooper lately is not. I don't see she's not the same Hannah Cooper. She's not standing out as Hannah Cooper like she did last season. But I also think that last season she had people around her like Ariel Walker who stood out sometimes and stood back sometimes. And I think that Ruthie and Talia are breaking out so much that it might be a little bit of Hannah's time to sit back. And Talia is something new, that right? I'm, I believe so, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, that's something that I'm excited to kind of poke Kelsey Music about and see what she has to say about it. Um, because I think we expect that Hannah Cooper – Hannah Cooper was someone who could have been player of the year. Yeah. You know, um, so I think that people expect that from her and they might not get that and they might say, why am I not getting that? But like, I think that her role has just changed. Yep. So, and I think, um, why can I not remember the twins that left? One of them was Trinity. Why can I not more. remember their names? Trinity and Tears of More. Trinity and Tears of More. Thank you. That's so bad of me. But, like, also, that goes to show my point that it's a new team. There's a new system. There's new roles. I and those, think are, those are big holes to fill, though. They, they rebound. Yeah. Those are big rebounding numbers that left. And the connection that I was going to make is that when Coach Kelsey Music came in, here we saw Tears of Step Back a little bit. Whether or not that had anything to do with her leaving, I don't know. I don't care. But her role changed because Kelsey had a new system. And I think that Hannah Cooper's role in Kelsey Music's first year system is not the same as Hannah Cooper's role in Kelsey Music's second year system. Or uh, Hannah Cooper's role, yeah. So um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't think that it's going to be a situation where they're so balanced and there's five or six. I think they can't have that without Ariel Walker and one of the Moors. Sure. Um, but I think – I think there's going to be some balance, but some breakout. I can't it's a, imagine. It's a fun Sorry, team. Like the the Sacramento State and them only scoring 56 points was almost like a, a cool off because we've been so used to them scoring triple digits in the 90s. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you get They're leading, the, leading yeah. the league in scoring right now with 80 yeah. or 80 point something. So if you don't show up defensively or you're going to they're going to run you over. Yeah. Well, and so that's what I'm, I'm going to bring up as far as predictions. Um, I only got through two of the games. I did not get through the other two. We can start with ORU USD. I have ORU 78, USD 75. Reason being, ORU likes to score. So does USD. But I'm not tomorrow's sure. Games? Tomorrow's games. Okay. I'm not sure how well either team's going to perform defensively. And also with that, is it going to be a lack of defense or is it just really good offense from both sides? Yeah, I mean, obviously with my red glasses on, I think that this is the game that um, USD, when it's done, finally goes, there we go. Yeah. Like this, the, and this has to be the game defensively that – at the end of it, they go, there we go. That's that's what we've been waiting for. Mm -hmm. um, or, or are you going to shoot it? They're going to shoot a lot. Um, they're going to take advantage of any mismatches that they can get on the offensive end. Um, mm -hmm. you, you know, I think Grace is at a point now where you're not going to stop her necessarily, but it's can you slow her down? Can you force Slow her down. to take tough shots to pass it where USD is chucking up threes? Because there's been games – and DSU where it's been like, Ugh. like the lid's on the rim kind of a deal. Um, and that gets frustrating to watch. And especially I bet as a player uh, forcing you out of your groove. So yeah, if Madison, that that's my game. And I think that the South Dakota schools have the two like games to watch, but I think USD, the way ORU has been playing, right? Like it's this high octane offense and USD is sometimes the defense just hasn't, 
been there on the on the road and at home, this is a game that if USD is going to be considered that, you know, content the top team, the contender, the one that is favored, they they've got to show up defensively against Oral Roberts and make a statement. Yeah, I don't disagree. I think that, like you said, these are the game to, games to watch. I think that ORU is a tough team to do what USD needs to do against. I think this is a tough draw to a tough team against which to try to find your identity again and Mm -hmm. go, okay, this is who we are. Like, I think this is, it would be much better if they could do that against, you know, UND or DU right now, who's not um, necessarily playing super well. But at the same time, when you play teams who aren't playing that well, like SDSU playing UND last week, it wasn't until we played Northern Arizona where it was like, okay, this looks pretty good because you're just not sure um, in some of those games. So as far as SDSU and St. Thomas, part of me thinks that like Paige Meyer is going to come out really hot. She's coming off a career performance. Are we going to see a lot of the same? But also SDSU typically in the Summit League, I would argue, doesn't face a team outside of the occasional USD that shares the ball in the way that SDSU does. They don't face teams with that same amount of balance. And I think, like I said, that St. Thomas is starting to play balanced. Mm -hmm. Um, I also think someone in the group chat the other day said that, I can't remember who it was, said we're not really seeing, SDSU doesn't have a Maya Selland anymore, right? We're not really, and, and, and the league doesn't have that anymore. We're not really seeing someone who's a Maya Selland or an Elena Pilakuda who's really big down low, gets burly, gets aggressive, gets yeah. tough, and goes to work down there. And then I threw out that with a little bit more experience and some consistency, if we start to see some consistency, I think that that's Joe Langbin uh, of St. Thomas. Certainly not to the same level. Nobody is going to be Maya Selland. Nobody's going to be Elena Pilakuda. But I think that Joe Langbin is going to be that new face in the league. And she's a junior so she's got um, mm-hmm. this year and next year left. I think she's going to start to be that presence down low. And I I think that SDSU certainly faced it in the non-conference, but not necessarily in the Summit League in the last couple of years outside of playing Omaha or when you know Hannah Sherman was still at USD. So I think that St. Thomas is going to challenge SDSU in a way that they maybe have not been challenged in the Summit League yet. I'm going SDSU 75, St. Thomas 67. I think a few free throws at the end kind of, allow them to pull away. They seem to do that, don't they? They seem to just pull away when you think with all the injuries that they would be the ones that get run down by the end. But it just it's not happening. So I don't know what's not in the yet. water up in Brookings, but Aaron Johnson. Excellent, <laughs> That's what's excellent in the water. conditioning. And I wanted to add one more thing to USD's game too and why it's so important. Because their next two games next week on the road at St. Thomas and then at home, or excuse me, on the road, I believe, um, against, let me double check, but it's against SDSU. So if, you know, they, they <laughs> got to figure it out this week. It's on the road yeah. at St. Thomas at Brookings. Those are your next two after Oral Roberts. So that's another kind of cool thing about the way the schedule works. Maybe the only cool thing is like SDSU is playing St. Thomas, right? And then USD is going to go play St. Thomas and then USD is going to go play SDSU. So I don't know. Mm -hmm. I haven't looked enough at the schedule to know if that's like an every week thing. I would assume it almost has to be kind of this little rotation as we get to see teams match up against each other and then match up against like the opposite or at least one of what they just played. So you can kind of look at it in little pods, if that makes sense. You know what I, I would love to do? What? I would love to go up, visit family and friends in the Twin Cities, and go catch the men's or women's USD team playing St. Thomas. But I can't because mirrored schedules keeps me to go to the game in Vermilion to see the men or women team. Shout out Mark Went. I, I was on the fence of mirrored schedules. I'm officially... I don't get it. I don't want them anymore. From a fan perspective, I can't go to Brookings for a game because the other team is playing in Vermilion. I think it 
the guys are in Brookings on a Sunday and the girls are Saturday. So one of them we could maybe make work, but mm -hmm. what are we doing? Sorry. Nobody's watching anyway. So <laughs> no, that's okay. Um, I don't disagree. I think that I am a little less aggressive about it, passionate about it. Um, I'm not Mark White level yet. Nobody is the level of Mark Wentz. Are you joking? <laughs> Um, take that with a grain of salt. Um, I, I don't like it. I also understand, well, I'm not going to say understand why. I understand that there are challenges to not having your schedules. I understand that, I mean, the coaches want it, obviously, because it's still happening. They, they either want it or they don't want the alternative or anything that comes with the alternative. So that's why it's still happening. Um, what I'm fed up with, Midco Sports, even though I love you very dearly, Craig DeWitt and everybody that works there, I want multi-view and I want four. I want to be able to watch four games at once. At least give me four screens. Right now, if you pay for Midco, you can only watch on three screens. So I can watch on two TVs and my laptop or whatever. That's it. Three screens. Multi-view would be preferred. But at least give me four screens because there's four games on at a time. I'm going to assume they're look, they're going to look into that after this year. I would hope so. I was asking my husband the other day. I was like, is that... Is it expensive to engineer that? Is it like, is there, what are the barriers to doing that? Like, why is it not happening? I know that like Midco Sports Plus is fairly new. Some like network is super new. I get that. I want multi-view. That's, that's my mirrored schedules. That's my Roman empire. That's the hill I will die on is yeah. wanting multi-view or I whatever the hell we if we had um, multi-view, then I would be a fan of, for some godforsaken reason, the entire Big Sky Summit League Challenge, start all eight games starting within, an what, an hour of each other? Wasn't that bogus? Come and I get it was because – was that on Wednesday? Because it was a Wednesday night. I get that. That but. was – give me a sec here. No, the Saturday. That was game. Saturday? Or was it – no, it was Wednesday. You're right. It was the Wednesday. It was all like seven – or eight central. Well, and here's the thing. I'm pretty sure most colleges, unless they're on a quarter system, but even so, two days after New Year's, you're not back in class. No. We had a couple 12 o'clock games. Like, why are we not stack? Uh, whatever. I know there's what there's way more fact. I I trust me. I I know with yeah a facility schedule. But but we are fans, and we deserve to. It is short for fanatic, yeah. which I'm really close to getting here. Are you? Are you really no. close to getting no. there? <laughs> That's so funny. Um. Okay. So here's the deal. Um. Tomorrow, the games that we didn't talk about are Omaha, UND. I'm predicting Omaha. I don't have a score for you. Um. Who would that leave? If Denver's not playing, that would leave Kansas City. And NDSU, that's correct, yeah. um, in Fargo. I don't really know. The way NDSU played their last game, I would go NDSU. But what I, I know think, Kansas City is capable of. I think NDSU by 20. By 20? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. I just. That's fine. I just, um, I don't know. I, I think, think if Kansas I think UND. I think UND wins by 10 to 15. NDSU wow, 15 to 20. The board. Um, I think Oral Roberts USD will be someone by 10 less or less. Okay. I said less. I said three. Um, and then I think the – I'm with you. I think that the St. Thomas SDSU game is close. St. Thomas maybe be up most of the game and then uh, – Brookings pulls away. The Jacks pull away at the end. I was like, Brookings, what are we talking about? I don't know. It might have such brain lapse right now. It's stupid. Well, clearly you're disagreeing with me on basically everything. Of course your brain's <laughs> not working correctly. We are the game. Want to be out here. No, I, if, oh, I can be if you want me to. If that'll drive I ratings up, I'll be whatever. You think that'll drive ratings up? Oh, my God. 
I'll be Are you just so, gonna no, because then I'd say stuff I would disagree with so bad I'd start laughing. <laughs> like what? Give me something that you, give me a skip Bayless take. Something you disagree with so bad about something like basketball that, that you'd start. You just with. want me to make something up here with make something up. Something like, um. Okay, so like let's say that USD is the Cowboys for me. So who does he? Hey, oh, LeBron. So let's pretend SDSU is LeBron in this. So, okay, who we, who who the Jacks have? St. Thomas? I mean, this is going to be – it's not even going to be close. That that glorified high school arena you guys play in where the sections are only 25 people, so of course it looks packed. St. Thomas is going to come in, and there's going to be five of these players. They're going to score at least 12 points. I mean, who are we kidding here? It's over. The dynasty is over. St. Thomas comes in. D3, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? And they're here now? The belt has been passed. Okay, it's St. Thomas. St. Thomas is going to win by at least 15 points. Every state, they're going to be booing the place to the ground after this game. It just don't that, was a, that was a phenomenal Skip Bayless impression. Imitation. And, that was but, and now I laugh at how and terrible of a take that was. That was so funny. I love that. Um, fantastic, phenomenal. All right, friends, we are Truly. going to <laughs> we're gonna drop in this Dory Collins interview for you. Um, don't go away. After that, we will be back next week, Wednesday night, 8 30 p.m. Central. Watch Summit League basketball. Stick around. Um, Dory Collins is coming up in, I don't know, 20 seconds or something. What a back to reaching the summit women's basketball podcast well our guest today came into the season with a career winning percentage of 68 and 40 percent of the girls on his roster this season are named abby uh head coach north from north Dakota state uh dory collins coach welcome back to the show hey madison thanks for having me appreciate you doing these absolutely so much fun i love doing this um coach you currently sit at seven and seven on the season the non-conference was kind of up and down some inconsistent scoring up until the past couple of weeks what are some of the things offensively that are kind of points of emphasis for you yeah you know we we went into the season you know trying to play with some pace i think we kind of started playing that way last year and, and had some success and and wanted to con you know kind of start where we left off last year as far as increasing our pace of play um, you know, one of the issues for us early in the year was I probably put together a too challenging of schedule. Um, you know, our non-conference schedule was loaded with road games against very, very good opponents. And, um, you know, with us being somewhat young in some positions, I think there was a lot of growing pains there uh, and probably made it harder on ourselves than um, maybe we wanted to. Um, so I think there was some things there that now we're starting to figure out a little bit, uh, just going through some growing pains in the non-conference season and, and playing really quality opponents that has sped up our, um, you know, ability to learn. And, and our learning curve has gotten a little bit quicker just because we played such good opponents. And, and now I think we're starting to reap some benefits, still have a long ways to go. But, um, you know, our pace has picked up here lately in some games and, and we're getting more balanced scoring for more players uh, when we are playing well. Yeah, absolutely. Great segue, because that's where I'm going next. 42 points in the paint against USD compared to only 18 against Montana State. How do you kind of keep that intensity and, and that pace up? Yeah, you know, the, the Montana State game was tough. Um, you know, we had some travel issues. We ended up having to fly there the day of the game um, and didn't get in the night before and have our regular uh, 
you know, day of the regular shoot around. And, and I, I felt like our young players, um, you know, right now we have 10 and seven of them are freshmen and sophomores. And, uh, you know, you'd like to be able to handle that adversity a little better than we did. Uh, but we didn't. And, and it was very apparent in that game in the first two or three minutes that we were not moving uh, and running and, and anything like we're capable of and that it was probably going to be a long day. Um, we had so many. I mean, you saw, you know, against USD, I think we scored 35 in the third quarter. And then here the other day, we scored 38 in the third quarter. And then Montana State, between those two games, we went 0 for 16 in the third quarter and didn't score a basket. Um, so that's so, uh, you know, so up and down. That's about as extreme as you can get uh, over a three game stretch. And I think for us, we, we really looked at the Montana State game and like, hey, can we just kind of take that as a one off game and, and throw it in the trash can and move on to the next one? And was proud of them for doing that. I mean, we had so many shots in that game around the basket that we just couldn't get to fall. Uh, and sometimes that happens. Um, and Montana State's a very good team. They're an excellent defensive team. Uh, and so when you're not on and, and don't have your good stuff, plus you're playing a really quality opponent, it's probably not going to be very good for you. And that's what we ran into on that night. Yeah, absolutely. Everyone talks about wanting to string together four good quarters and not just a good quarter here and there. And that's certainly what everyone's working towards. Um, we have to talk about the Abbeys. There are four of them, uh, but specifically the three that have been starting, whether it's Schulte Draper or Abby Kay, whose last name I will probably never learn how to say. Yep. Um, they've all kind of contributed in different ways. So what what good have you seen from the Abbey pool this season? Well, I'll give you. We have we have Schulte is just Schulte. We have um, Abby Draper is Drapes. Um, Abby Graham is AG and Abby Krzywinski is AK. So that's how we keep them separate, because the, the, if you have if your name is Abby, you have a good chance of getting recruited by us, apparently. So, yeah, uh, apparently. Anybody, <laughs> stuff and send your film in um you know those three have been you know schulte has been uh been here for into her fourth year now and um has really blossomed into a leader for our team it is not always a stat sheet stuffer uh but without question is our leader on the floor uh, and our glue player and probably and not probably she would be if there was somebody if the coaches couldn't be at practice and somebody had to run practice and teach things and and you know really drill our concepts she would be the one that would know exactly what we need to be doing um, and can help other people along so uh, she's invaluable in that regard uh, on just her knowledge of our processes and what we do and what we're looking for um, you know Abby Draper I think is maybe the most improved player on our team um, you know last year was in a in a backup role at the four spot uh, for Taylor Brown, who who came in and had a great, you know, one graduate year for us. Um, but Drapes has really, really come on. We've kind of had to move her to the five. And, um, uh, you know, she's not uh, a little bit slight of build, tall, slender kid, but man, she plays really, really hard all the time um, and has gotten really good in and around the basket um, and really provided, you know, some consistency uh, in scoring for us in the paint, which is something that, you know, everybody is looking for. Uh, and then AK as a freshman, I mean, you know, when she came in, uh, it was pretty evident right away that she was an ultimate competitor. Um, I think, you know, given where she played in high school at YZ and uh, for playing for the Fury, she had played high level competition in high school, uh, you know, in her high school season and in her AAU season. And I think the jump for her was not as big as some other players just because she played some of the best players in the country, uh, you know, at her level and her age, uh, you know, throughout high school. So mixing it up physically, um, you know, those kind of big time games against big time opponents, she was a little bit more used to that. And I think this allowed her to just kind of jump right in and, and get into some flow. I mean, she's, she has to learn things that all freshmen do at this level. Um, but I couldn't be more pleased with how she's going so far. Yeah, absolutely. Well, speaking of ultimate competitors, Elle Evans is next on my list of people to bring up. She was Summit League freshman of the year last year, dropped, I think, 25 points in the Northern Arizona game. And she's young, but how has she kind of contributed to the leadership effort on your team? Yeah, it, she's coming along right there as well. You know, we kind of have a leadership group with our team, and, and she was uh, chosen by our teammates to be on that. Um, so that tells you what they think of her and how much respect they have for her. 
Um, you know, the things that people don't see with Elle is what kind of practice player she is. She when if, if we ever have to run sprints or, you know, in the preseason, she wins everything by half a court length. Um, you know, she never takes a day off of practice or a drill. Um, and that's something you obviously appreciate as a coach, but also earns the respect of everybody, you know, in the gym. And, um, you know, that pays off for her. She had a great freshman year. Um, it was a little up and down, you know, in the non-con. But again, we were playing really, really good teams in some tough circumstances. And you're just not going to put up the kind of numbers that you normally do uh, against that quality of competition. Um, and I was so proud of her last week, Madison. I mean, she, I think, was the first time against Montana State. She was 0 for 7, didn't score a point in the game. That's the first time she's been scoreless in her college career. Um, Could have hung her head about that. And, and pouted about it for a couple of days and been upset, but she came right back on Thursday and Friday and had two great days of practice. And then, um, you know, came out and had a career high on Saturday um, and was instrumental in us winning that game on both ends of the floor, played great defense um, and obviously shot and finished the ball well. So that's all you can ask for people. Adversity happens and tough games happen and how you respond to them is everything. And, and she definitely did that at a high level. Yeah, absolutely. Um, she also, I think, defensively is in the top three in blocks in the Summit League. Um, and Kansas City has a girl who's in the top eight in blocks. And that's, you know, who you're facing. So and, and scoring as many points in the paint as you did um, in the past couple of games, that's obviously something you're driving for. So how, do you think that's going to be challenging going up against Kansas City or what are you looking at? there? Yeah, you know, KC has two, uh, you know, Jocelyn Ewell and Tamiya Ugas have been good players in our league for, you know, several years now. Um, and, and they definitely have a, a post presence there, um, you know, and then I, I would butcher her name, but the Missouri State transfer is really, really. Yeah, yeah, she's she's the one that, you know, probably adds the athleticism to that group uh, as far as just movement skills, not just size, um, you know, so that's that's going to be something to look at. Um, you know, as we get in and around, we're obviously a big ball screen offense and, and the way that they cover things and, and do things is a little bit different than everybody else. They have terrific team athleticism um, and they pressure the heck out of you and climb up into you defensively. Um, you know, for us, that's not something, you know, that's a little bit unique in our league. Um, but I, that, that's another reason why I'm glad we played a really tough non-con schedule. We've played a couple teams like that that have at least – given us that look where hopefully we can recall, hey, remember this game against Toledo, remember this game against uh, Harvard, this is how they were pressuring us and doing those things and, and have a little recall there to help us. But uh, that'll be a great battle. Um, I have a ton of respect for Coach D and what she's doing already there at Kansas City. And uh, we're looking forward to the, to the competition. Absolutely, I'm excited as well. Um, my last kind of serious question for you, you mentioned, you know, the growing pains. Every team goes through adversity. Last year, it was USD with injuries, then Kansas City with roster turnover. This year, SDSU injuries, and you guys are now facing kind of the roster changes and the shorthandedness. I think you said 10 players and seven of them are, are freshmen and sophomores. How do you kind of keep the morale high and keep the team on the same page as you're, you know, going through that journey? Yeah, I mean, that's a, it's never ideal, obviously. Um, you know, all three of the kids that left our program, I loved all three of them. Uh, and I wish they were all still three, you know, we're all here. Um, but you know, things happen and circumstances come about and people have to make decisions. And, you know, what we do, you know, after that is up to us, you know, how we respond to that is up to us. Um, and, you know, what it does probably, uh, if you're looking for silver linings and, and the positive outlook is, you know, most kids on our team know they're going to play. You know what your role is. Things get dialed in a little bit on, hey, this is how we have to play. We, we're very fortunate that we feel like we have, you know, our five kids that start and we have five legitimate backups. Um, and, and that's more than most people play. A lot of people are playing eight and nine kids regularly anyways uh, in a season. And, you know, knock on wood that we can stay healthy from here on out. But, um, you know, I think being able to dial into your role and embrace your role now that it's really, really defined, whether that was by, uh, you know, elimination of, of some competition there in practice or whatever, um, it, it, you have a chance to become a tight knit group, uh, the smaller it is. Uh, and I think our kids are embracing that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, coach, you know, I like to have some fun and get some smiles. I yeah. dug through NDSU's women's basketball social media to find something worth showing. And I didn't think I was going to find anything. And then I did. I found something that the people need to see. Now I'm nervous. Um, 
So don't be nervous. Um, so I need to know, was there like a draft process in the war room between sweaters? Were you filthy animal all the way? How did we come to this decision? Okay, so that's an easy one. Um, I knew it was an ugly sweater game. Um, but obviously, me being really naive, I just assumed that was like fans were going to wear ugly sweaters. I had no idea that our staff uh, and uh, I believe that was Central Michigan staff yes. uh, were going to wear ugly sweaters as well. So it became the day of the game and they were all asking me what I, my staff was asking me what I was wearing. And I was like, well, I didn't know we were doing that. Um, and so uh, Mac, our director, of, uh, Michaela Schulke, our director of basketball ops, said, I'll take care of you. She went and picked it out for me. And that's what was in our locker room before I walked out. So I didn't pick it. I just took it and did what I was told and, and put it on. No choice in the matter. That's right. That's fantastic. I love it. Um, all right, folks, the Bison are home Thursday and Saturday this week against the Ruse and the Mavs. Both games on WDAY with Dom Izzo, also on Summit League Network, Bison 1660, if you prefer radio. Or I have a better idea. Saturday is Thunder's birthday. So you could head down to the shack and take it all in Come see uh, in person. Yeah, absolutely. You don't want to miss it. Coach Collins, thank you for coming back. We enjoyed having you. All right. Thanks, Madison. Appreciate you.